All right. So, hello and uh, good afternoon, everyone. This is Tina Boise. I am the education manager uh, for Toby Dynavox in the UK and Ireland. And I am today uh, supported by my colleague, Alice Langley. So, um, Alice is a speech language therapist who works as one of our account managers. I am a teacher by training. So um, if you've got any questions or comments throughout the session, just ping them in the chat at any time. And um, Alice will answer them if she can via chat. And then I'll address some of them um, that I can and depending on time through the session. So we're going to take a look today at BoardMaker 7 and specifically how we can use it to create print materials. So for some of you who are veteran BoardMaker users, you're gonna see some lovely new features um, that we've added to BoardMaker 7. And for those of you who are new to BoardMaker altogether, well then this is where I think so many of us start with creating print materials. I am also going to just start by saying that my board maker seven is a beta version because our development team is where it's still working very hard to get this out. Um, right now we're looking at the 20th of October where board maker seven will be introduced to the world. So if a few things go a little bit wrong, it's just because I am still working on a beta version. So I'll just sort of give you that little bit of warning. Um, the teams are is still ironing out the wrinkles. But more BoardMaker 7 is a really new and much anticipated, um, a really exciting, sorry, and much anticipated addition to the BoardMaker family. Um, going forward, we are going to just have one form of BoardMaker, and that is BoardMaker 7. So for any of you who are currently using BoardMaker online, you are going to be um, transitioned over to BoardMaker 7 subscription with um, no charge to that. It'll just be something that happens. For any of you that are using older versions of BoardMaker, um, we'll give you information at the end as well as some contact to, uh, to talk to our team about how we can help you move from your older versions of BoardMaker to BoardMaker 7. So just a little bit about BoardMaker 7. It's going to be available uh, for Windows, Mac, and Chromebook as far as the editor, which is what we're going to look at today. The editor is the place where you are going to be able to create your print and interactive resources. You'll see how we can do that from scratch as well as from templates. You can also bring in anything you've made in older versions of BoardMaker into the BoardMaker 7 editor. We're gonna look at how you can make um, multi-page documents and how you can print to PDF as well as so many different things. Um, now there is just gonna be one board maker going forward, but there will be two ways to purchase it. So you can have a standard option of board maker where you purchase a license and you put it on however many machines you um, paid for or there is a purchase option of subscription. So those of you who have BoardMaker online right now are gonna be moved to a BoardMaker 7 subscription. And any of our BoardMaker 7 subscribers are going to be able to install BoardMaker 7 editor on unlimited computers. You can put it on as many Windows, Mac, and Chromebook devices as you like, and then you use your login as sort of your license. That says, okay, you're free to use it, and off you go. So we can give you lots more information about how this all works. Um, that's all I'm gonna say about that now, but if anybody wants to stick around or we'll give you contact um, info and follow up. We are gonna look solely at this session at print resources, and we're gonna see how you can make something from blank and, and start and really do things exactly as you like. We're also gonna take a bit of time looking at the templates that are available and how you can quickly get up and running with a great bank of templates. And I'll, hire, I'll highlight some new ones that we've added to BoardMaker 7. Um, we're also gonna take a look at how you can grab things from the community. So how people have created things um, and shared it on our BoardMaker community and how we can grab that and take what they've made and personalize it a bit and make it our own. We're also going to look at activities to go, which is a great addition to um, BoardMaker 7 for subscribers and all the resources that you'll get with that. Before we go into the program though, I want to um, just give you an update on the symbols because of course they're at the heart of everything that we do with BoardMaker. 
So the Board Maker Classic symbols are going to be given a little bit of a facelift as we bring them into Board Maker 7 when we bring in an addition of being able to really easily change the skin tone of our, of our um, symbols. So that's not just for classic, but for all of our symbols, you'll be able to change the skin tone. So you can see I've got a very diverse set of eggheads here um, in my example. We also are adding a second volume to the high contrast symbols. So these have been out for a while and they've been developed um, for learners who have a visual impairment. They're a small subset of our classic symbols, but when we release Board Maker 7, we're bringing a second volume to that, which is going to include a great bit of new content. So really, really exciting for those of us who are supporting people with a visual impairment. Our thin line symbols have had a great new infusion recently with a diversity initiative. Those of you who are using Board Maker Online have seen these um, as we've released them in our bi-weekly updates. But it's lovely to see our thin line symbols have um, a new initiative where it really reflects lots of different backgrounds, ethnic backgrounds and diversity. So that's something that will be ongoing and is really, really welcome. For those of you who aren't familiar with the in-context symbols, um, these are our symbol set that have been with us since BoardMaker Online. They were created to support people who've had a stroke or brain injury. As you can see from these examples, they depict older learners um, who are using a lot of body language in a very contextually rich background. So we can see that you know, we're seeing the word more in lots of different circumstances, whether I need more time when I'm at a restaurant or I'm asking my partner for more at the dinner table when I'm out in the community. They're really a lovely set of um, symbols which are a very welcome addition. And for our bi-weekly, uh, sorry, for our board maker subscribers, it's the end of a long week. Uh, for our board maker uh, subscribers, you are gonna get bi-weekly symbol updates. This is something our board maker online users have come to know and love. And it means that we can really keep up with customer demands, whether it's, um, our younger learners, our teenage and our tween age users saying they want language that reflects what their friends are saying and the things that they're talking about around them, or whether it's supporting talking about current events and politics, looking at life and living in specific areas. Here you can see an update, um, samples of updates that were specific to life and living in the UK and Ireland or specific initiatives that come from customers, whether it's around supporting people who use AAC or those who are on an ICU ward, talking about internet safety or specific parts of the body or the environment. So these bi-weekly symbol updates will continue for our BoardMaker 7 subscribers. But everyone who uses BoardMaker 7 is gonna start with at least 45,000 symbols. For those of you who are using older versions, this is probably gonna be quite a jump up from what you're used to. Judith, I don't talk about, I see a question about uh, sign language. I don't talk about sign language specifically in these UK sessions because all the sign language symbols are currently around American sign, which is different from the sign language we use in the UK as well as Europe. So um, we can get you some information about sign language because it's not something I'm totally up to speed with because it is very specific to the American market. But I'll make sure I connect you with somebody in the US to answer that question. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is um, take you into BoardMaker 7, into the editor, and we're gonna go through and talk about how you can use all of these symbols in lots of different ways to really um, improve your print resources that you're making now. So if there's any questions, feel free, as Judith just did, to, to chat in. I'm just gonna change my share to a different screen where I have Board Maker 7 open. But at any time, just ask any questions. I will move these, there you go, and there. All right, so here I am on my uh, Board Maker 7 dashboard. You can see what I have most recently been working on as well as what I have stored in my BoardMaker, the cloud storage um, area of BoardMaker 7, the place where our BoardMaker online users will find all of the resources they've made throughout the years using BoardMaker online. 
but I'm going to stay here. And the first thing I'm going to do is click because I want to create something new. And here I'm going to see my um, template picker. I can see my most recently used templates. But what I'm going to do right now is go into blank because I would like to make something from scratch. I want a nice blank piece of paper. And right from the offset, it's going to ask if I want to work in portrait or landscape. I also have the option for interactive, but that's for another day. Today, I'm going to work in a portrait um, uh, layout and then click on create. And I love how it just asks me from the beginning, what, you know, how do you want to start with your piece of paper? So I'm just going to minimize this for a second. So I've got a nice big workspace. And the first thing I'm going to do is start as I've always started with BoardMaker, and that is create a button. I can do just a standard square button, but I'm going to delete that. I can also start with different shaped buttons. So here you can see a bunch of preset buttons in various shapes. So I'm going to click on that. Okay. So I can spray these, which I'll do in a moment. But what I'm going to do first is go to my properties panel because I want this to look a certain way. So what I'd like to do is besides changing the shape, which if I decide after I put that on that I don't want that shape, I can go to the properties panel and change the style and choose a different shape. Maybe I'd like something like that. Even after I've put it on the page, I can choose a different border color. I can choose a, a different border style. I can change the thickness of my border. So I can make all these changes to my button right from the offset. I can also change things like the font I'm using. I can change the font size and alignment, all different kinds of really great stuff that um, BoardMaker Align and Studio users will be used to seeing here on the right-hand side with the properties panel. Version 6 users, you had a lot of this tucked away up on the top and you'd have to click buttons. We're trying to make things a little bit more intuitive and, and in your face here with the, with the properties panel. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to edit in place. I'm going to type the word reward because what I'd like to do is set up some tokens for a reward system. And I can um, see the symbols that are available to me when I search the word reward. But I think there's none of these really work. What I would like to do is set um, a symbol for the word play because my reward is getting time playing on a computer. So I've just changed the search term, and here I can see there's tons of symbols for the word play. Actually, 227 results because I'm looking for play anywhere within the label. So as I scroll down, we'll see things like um, communication display because I see P-L-A-Y within that label. So it's looking for those letters anywhere within my um, symbol label. I could change to look for those words be at the beginning of a symbol label. So now that's cut it down to 136 results. I see play pen and PlayStation. I can look for it as a whole word. So now I'm getting 48 results. And I can also look for play at the end. So I've got 74. So this is a, a new way of searching for those of you who have been using um, Board maker online, but something that some of us are used to if we've used older versions, but there's improvements to it, certainly. So I'm going to do um, this symbol for play, because if I get as a reward, I get to play on my PlayStation. So that's what I want as a reward. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to spray it now that it's populated, because I'm going to use these tokens over and over. So I've just filled it in and I've sprayed rather than having to go in and spray this a number of times. And I can go back in even after I have um, sprayed this and used the property panel, because maybe now I've decided I want to have a, back, a yellow background on these. Or if I want to affect just one, I can go in and say, let's change the background on just that one instead of all of them. Is this making sense? Do we have any questions at this point? What I'm going to do now is I've actually decided I need another row. I don't have quite enough. There's only tw 10, he um, 12 here, and I want to add another row of uh, reward tokens. So I'm just grabbing this, and notice how as I um, shrink and change the, say, the shape, sorry, the size of the rows, that the symbols and the words go with it. 
I'm not pressing anything on my keyboard as I do that. For version six users, this is a great, great um, added feature. What I can do now to add another row is I can just use my spray button and I'll spray one button down and then I can spray one button across and I've added another row. And this is gonna let me move these around. Maybe I want that one there, this one here, that one over there, or maybe I accidentally move something. Something that I really like that we've added to the properties panel is these alignment tools here. So if I wanna align this button back up with that button, I'm just gonna click on that button first, press control on my keyboard as I click on the second button, and I can just click on alignment. Mm -hmm. And I can also say, um, change it as well if I move it down. Sorry, I can do lots of different things to align these out. So now I want that one and I want that one aligned across the bottom. So you can kind of move things around. You also, of course, always have your undo button as well, which can be really, really helpful to uh, undo any mistakes you might have made when you move things around. I'm just going to get rid of these by pressing delete because there's another way I can add a, a row to my page here. And that's by clicking on the page itself versus a button. And then noticing here on the right hand side, I've got my page layout. And what I can do is change this layout from sort of a loose layout where I can move things around as I just showed you to a grid. So now I can say, well, actually what I would like to do is add another row here, and then it will add a row to the bottom. I can also here decide to change the margins. So maybe I want a margin, bigger gap between my symbols. If I put the margin at the bottom, that's gonna give me the margin around my paper. So that's another way I can move and manipulate things after I've put them on the page. Does this make sense? I love this new feature. I think it's gonna be really time-saving for a lot of people. And now I can spray and fill those in. And what's cool is when I do it with the layout, what I can do there is it's just gonna swap things around. So notice I've got this green, this green button here. So as I move it around, it's just going to shift things around versus I keep it in that locked grid system and let me really easily and quickly move things around versus before where I kind of had to use that alignment and stuff. But this is keeping it into that locked grid layout. All right, I'm just gonna check. So I hope that all made sense. So that's one way that you can create things from scratch. Um, you can do a lot more than this, but what I wanna do now is move on to um, how we can use templates. And all of the features that I'll show you when we, when we start with templates will apply to making things from scratch. But templates are such a quick way to get up and running. And we've got some lovely new ones in BoardMaker 7. So I wanna move on to that. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm, I just closed out, I'm back at my dashboard, I'm gonna click on new. And this time I'm gonna go to printable because this is gonna give me access to all of my printable templates. And what I'd like to do right now is go into behavior supports. You can see there's tons of subcategories that cover lots and lots of different um, themes and concepts. But I'm gonna go to behavior supports. And what I'd like to do right now is just go onto this self-monitoring chart. And I'm gonna click on create, which is going to give me this template, which now I can edit. So first thing I wanna do is change this symbol. I don't use that symbol for Wednesday in my classroom, I use a different symbol. So I can just click on it and I'm just pressing return on my keyboard, which initiates a symbol search. So I can change that symbol. And now I wanna change my label. So I'm just clicking on it. And again, I'm just gonna type. I'm gonna, uh, my goal is to be patient. Those on this call who work with me know patience is not one of my virtues. Now I'm gonna click on class and I can see Alice laughing. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna click on class and I'm gonna type where I wanna be patient first. So the first place I'm gonna be patient is at breakfast. Oop, helps if you type it correctly. Uh, Breck, oops, sorry, breakfast and press return. And I'll choose the breakfast that looks like the breakfast I have in the morning. And then I have to be patient at the bus stop. Oh, I hate waiting for the bus, so I'll choose that. And so on and so forth. If I wanna change any of these times, so I get to the bus for 9.15, I'm just gonna go in and type 9.15. And we actually have a clock face for every five minutes. Okay, so for every five minutes for the 24 hours, we've got um, that clock. 
uh, that, so I'll just go and put that in. And I can continue to go in there and change that around. Now you may notice that my symbol is to the left instead of, I think before it was above my word. We can change these really easily. So I've just clicked on breakfast and over here on my properties panel, I can choose from lots of different symbol layouts. So if I prefer the symbol to be above the word or I prefer the symbol to be below the word or I'd like it to be at the left or the right, however I want to change that, or maybe I just want text itself. And that can be for um, the entire selection. It doesn't have to be one at a time. I can do all of them that way if I want. Scroll down a little bit and I can play around with my, um, with my alignment as well. So if I want the words in the middle and my symbol over there to the right. Everybody cool with that? Does anybody have any questions? There was just one question um, from a little bit earlier, Tina, that I wasn't able to answer. Are there a maximum number of undos? There probably is, but I think it's a whole heck of a lot because I have really screwed up and I've pressed like 20 times and it's gone back. I don't know the exact number, but it's a, it's a lot more than a dozen. Um, we can get you that information um, and email it over once I know. I don't know exactly, but it is, it's quite a lot. It's quite a lot. Thank you. Cool. Any other questions? No, I think that's it. All right, I think I'll save this one. So let's save uh, Tina self monitor. All right, so I'm gonna go back and um, to my dashboard up here, click on return dashboard. And what I'd like to do now is I'm gonna do something like this. I wanna make a life cycle. Um, it's a sequence, but I wanna also be able to change it out because I'd like to do, um, a life cycle sequence maybe for instead of this one is um, butterfly I want to do it for sorry holding up there we go hold it to do the frog so I'm gonna go in I've actually started one already so you don't have to sit here watching me edit everything this was something I made before so I'm gonna click on edit and I can see now that's the sequence but where where are the cards I just showed you those those cards there I find them on the left-hand side, I minimized it earlier, it's my pages panel. So this template, and it is found if you go into the template picker, into sequences, you will find um, a number of different steps of sequences that we can choose from. So I have picked the three-step sequence here. I can go in, actually, let's call that a uh, life cycle. I can do some further edits, even though I did this before. Here we can see I've created the symbol cards that come as part of the template. It gives me instructions on what to do. This one's for frog. So what I really like to do is make another because we're talking about the, the frog, we're talking about the butterfly. So right here on my pages panel, I can click on these little dots and I can click duplicate. So that's an improvement for those of you who've been using Board Maker Online. You'd have to click copy and then paste. We've just done duplicate. So now I can see I have two copies of that page. So I'm gonna go to one of them. I'm gonna highlight these buttons and then I'm gonna right click because we have a lot of really lovely light, right click um, features in here. One of them is clear contents. So I'm just gonna clear that out. And now I'm gonna type in what I need to do the butterfly. So I'm gonna type in caterpillar Oh, and it helps if you spell it correctly. That's why I'm not finding a symbol. Caterpillar, there we go. And then a cocoon. And notice it also saved my um, formatting. So when I chose um, what, I can't multitask. When I chose what um, colors I liked, what font I liked, when I duplicated that page and cleared it, it saved the formatting for me as well, which saves me time. All about being as quick as I can here. So uh, lots of nice improvements if you've been using Board Maker Online. Things that um, have certainly been improved from older versions of Board Maker. A little bit more intuitive, a little bit more in your face here. Any questions on that? There are none in the comments at the moment. All right, so let's save this one. We'll save that update because I already had it. Now let's return to the dashboard. All right, now I'm gonna show you, again, going to new, a new template. It's going in printable. 
This is a new template. We didn't have these in Board Maker Online or Studio. And they are the visual scenes. There's lots of pre-populated visual scenes. I really, really love these. Take a look at, at them. Um, some really lovely content. But I'm going to do here, find the object. I'm going to do an empty one here. And I am going to click on Create. And here we've got find the object, find the object that starts with. I'm gonna do find the object, find, and I'm gonna click a second time so I get my cursor because I only wanna edit a few of these. Find the object that um, is healthy to eat. And what I wanna do is put a picture on here of a kitchen with lots of different objects and we can, actually, we're not gonna find the object, we're gonna color, that's what I wanna do color the objects that are healthy to eat. There we go. Um, so what I'm gonna do now is verse, instead of doing my edit in place, what you saw, saw me do earlier where I'm just clicking, typing, pressing return, I'm gonna this time go over to my symbols panel over here on the right hand side. And here we'll see all of our symbols have been categorized into a folder system. And down at the bottom, I actually have visual scenes. Oh, clicked on twice there, visual scenes. So when I click on this, and I, don't, I see all the visual scenes that we have available to us. And one of the visual scenes we have is the cooking area. So I'm going to just grab this and bring it over and plop it into that box. So now I have my kitchen. And now I'm gonna go and do some, actually I'm not gonna go to edit in place. I'm gonna go back to my folder system. I can click on the little home page here and I'm gonna go to food and drink. And I've got lots of different things here in food and drink and I'm gonna go to snacks and sweets. Now I've said, let's color the objects that are healthy to eat. These are all colored in already. So what I'm gonna do on my little um, filter here is I'm gonna change my symbol color to black and white and I'm gonna click apply. In updates, subsequent updates of BoardMaker 7, we are also going to be able to add having a different search language and label language displayed. So you're going to have, to, you're going to be able to have dual language labels. And, and I believe this is where you're going to find it. So that's something we had in version six and it's been missing for quite some time. We're bringing that back in version seven. I also love how we've made it really easy to toggle between black and white and color. Something you could always do in older versions, but you'd have to go into user settings and it was quite faffy to do. Here we've made it very easy to do. So I'm gonna click on apply. And if I just go back and I'm gonna open that up again, here we're gonna see that all of my symbols are in black and white. So now I can go in and actually yogurt is, is, let's see, that's a good one to put in. I'm gonna put that in that little box and I'm just gonna say, let's add it. And then let's find something that's unhealthy. Yogurt, I think is fairly healthy to eat. Let's put candy in there. Yep, and let's add that. So that's filling into our boxes. Actually, I shouldn't have pressed add to, I should have pressed replaced. Hold on, I'm gonna back, let's go back. Sorry, I've got that Friday feeling today. I'm gonna not add to, I'm gonna replace it. And now it'll go in there, there we go. So now I can go in and put all different types of snacks into my scene. And then we can print this out and our learners can color in the ones that are healthy and keep the ones that are unhealthy, black and white. I see that Judith is asking if we can use an actual photo or a Google image. Absolutely, Judith, you certainly can. I was gonna show that in my next example, but I'll do that in here. So I can go to right there, you see web search. I can go in and let me put in a kitchen. And I can find a, um, an image from the internet here. So I can bring that in. So let me just bring that and let's replace. There we go, so I've put the kitchen in there. Or if I have an image um, saved to my media, if I'm a subscriber, that's a place where you can batch upload photos that you use often to cloud storage. So it follows you around wherever you go and you don't have to worry about which computer you're on in order to access pictures. But you can also add to media from here and that's where, oh, nope, sorry, where do you get it? Oh, there's a way to get it. 
in right from your files. And I don't know how to do that on this yet. I know how to do it when we edit in place. When I press return, I choose from file there. I don't know how to do it from the symbol finder. There might be a way and it just might not be in yet in the beta version or that's something that's not going to be through the symbol finder. It's only edit in place. I'll have to get back to you on that. But definitely from this, from edit in place, then I can bring in my own photographs that way as well. So that you can absolutely, at the end of the day, bring in images that you have on your computer, images that you've saved to your cloud storage, or in images from the internet. Okay, you got lots of different ways to bring in images, plus everything that we're giving you. Cool, any other questions? What is everybody thinking so far? Are we liking this? What are your thoughts? Put that in the comments as well. I can see quite a lot of nodding and smiling, so I think it's uh, great. Excellent. All right, well, we've got about 15 minutes to go and we're doing really well on time. What I wanna do now is show you again, another template. I'm gonna go to new, and this time I'm going to go to books and presentations. And I would like to create a book um, about, uh, with text above. So I'm gonna click on that. And now I'm gonna go in and let's say, I wanna make a book about being out and about in the community. So here I go, I'm gonna do a picture there. So this is where I'm actually gonna put, I live in a town called Whitstable. So I know we don't have a symbol for that. I can go to the web there and find an image of my town that I live in, of the high street. So let's put that one in, there's a good one. Let's do Whitstable, put that in. And now I can go to the next page and I'm gonna type, I like going to the bakery. Now again, I could go to my symbols and I can search through different places there and look for the um, look for the bakery, or I can just type in here bakery and put the symbol there. Something else I stumbled upon the other day, which I didn't realize we had. Um, I love going to the cupcake shop. We have a cupcake shop in Whitstable. Doesn't every town have a cupcake shop? And we don't have a symbol for cupcake shop. But we do have blanks here. Do you see we've got store form and room form. So I can bring this in and I'm gonna plop that in there. And now what I wanna do is add a couple of symbols into this storm store form of cupcakes. So I'm gonna search in here for cupcake and I'm now gonna drag. I can't do edit in place there. I can't add more because I just keep writing over it themselves. I do have to go to the symbol finder and then I can add to. Now my store symbol has gone a bit small on me there, but then I can go in and I can bring in my cupcake. Let's bring in a chocolate cupcake. And actually let's right click on this and let's copy it and let's paste it. I want two cupcakes. And what I'd also like is this to be a strawberry cupcake. And I know we've got that high contrast one, but I want it to be a strawberry cupcake with sprinkles. So I'm gonna go to properties and I'm gonna go to edit symbol here. And here I open up the symbol editor and we have some nice new features in the symbol editor with, with some more to come, particularly things about the skin tone and changing skin tones easily. But I'm gonna go to fill and I wanna choose a nice pink um, color. I'm just going here. There we go. Use pink. And I'm going to fill that. I could also choose to fill all. Maybe I want the cupcake wrapper to be a different color. So I'm going to do fill all so it changes all of those yellows there. And I want all of the stripes to be a bit of a darker green. There we go. So I can do that. I can choose some shapes here. So let's choose a circle and let's have red spots on here. So now I can choose and make some nice little red. There's some other things you can do. I like this filter here. I can choose filters. I think this could have some really great implications for our learners with visual impairments. 
we could do things like do inverses or gray scales. And I think there's some interesting stuff we could do with that. But it's an addition, ooh, and we've got undo here as well. Um, it's an addition to the editor, which I think we need to play around with and see what we can do. But it's very, very cool stuff. So there we go. So now I've made a symbol for the cupcake shop by adding symbols to one symbol and creating my own. Cool stuff. All right. Any questions that have come through? I'm making somebody hungry. <laughs> it's almost lunchtime, Debs. Anybody else? <laughs> All right. So what I'd like to do now is I'm going to return to my dashboard. Uh, I'm not going to save this one. So I've created something from scratch. I have shown you a number of different templates and there are so many more. There's over 400. So really do make sure you go in and have a good play when um, you get your hands on Board Maker 7. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go to the community because there's this whole community of Board Maker users um, from all over the world who shared their resources. And it's a great place for me to find some content, take a copy of it and make it my own. So I'm gonna click on community here. Now I'm just gonna to toggle cause that's um, launching to a different community. I wanna to toggle to community right now in my beta version. So this is gonna look slightly different. It doesn't have nearly as many activities as we have in our board maker online community currently, but that's all gonna transition over. But in the community, I can go and search for things. So I'd really like to make an aided language display, an aided, um, an an aided language space, ALD. So I'm just gonna search for that and see what we have in the community. Now, when this goes live and it merges with our current community, you're gonna find a lot more than two. This is just our test beta area. But I see there's one for Bonfire Night. And Bonfire Night is coming up. It feels very autumnal here in the, the UK. So I'm really feeling kind of like getting ready for this kind of stuff. So I can see this thing that Molly made and I'm just gonna click on add there. So now that's adding a copy of what Molly made into my board maker. So my board maker is that, that cloud storage area that's gonna follow me around to any of the board maker sevens that I log into. Cause remember as a subscriber, I've got unlimited installations. I could put it on a thousand computers. So that my board maker area, that cloud storage area is right there. If I click on that, what I'm gonna see is, look at there's what I just added and there's the stuff I was just working on earlier in this session. The Tina's self monitoring and the life cycle, all of that has synced up to the cloud because I'm right now in my office computer, but I might wanna go and edit that self monitoring when I'm sitting on my laptop at home in front of the television and I don't have that computer at my disposal, well, the cloud storage means that it follows me around. For those of you who've been using BoardMaker Online or the BoardMaker community through the years, all of this stays with you when you transition to BoardMaker 7. So you don't have to worry about bringing things over or transferring it. It's all that my BoardMaker area is staying the same. So now what I can do is click on that board that bonfire ALD right here. I can click on, let's edit it. Oh, sorry. Nope, I shouldn't do that. It should click on. Um, sorry, I'm making a mess of this. Click on this. It should launch me to board maker seven. It's not, that's one of those beta things that isn't working right now. When I click on this, I can say, let's edit in board maker seven and it will open that right up in board maker seven for me. I can also find it when I'm in Board Maker 7 in my Board Maker. It's right there. So I click on this and it's syncing to that cloud storage. There it is. So I can download that. So maybe I found it on the community in my office computer and now I'm on my home computer and I just click download. I don't have to go back into my Board Maker online account. I can just click edit there and there's my aided language display that actually was made in version six. So this was something that wasn't made in BoardMaker Online, it was, or BoardMaker 7, it was made in version six. And I can see that I can really easily go in and edit it to choose symbols that are more appropriate. I can also go in and um, add more rows, add more columns to it. Everything you saw me do in this session, I can now apply to this version six. 
um, resource that I took from the community and added to my BoardMaker 7. Any of you who've tried to do this in BoardMaker Online, I promise you it's going to be a much better and easier, easier experience now. It's going to be a whole lot more straightforward to edit things in BoardMaker 6 than you might have experienced in um, BoardMaker Online. The team have really worked to, um, to improve that for you. Cool. Any questions? Because we're kind of in the home stretch. I've got five more minutes. We just had a question about um, using logins at the same time. So Tia asked um, if the two people wanted to use it at the same time, would they need separate logins? So um, yeah, I've just put that, that, that yeah, for, for the same time, and um, then yes, they would need two different logins. Yes, absolutely. So you can install on unlimited computers, and then the login allows that person to log in and use it for that session. So one login means one person using it at a time. Um, if you have been sharing logins and this is going to be problematic for you, then please talk to us and we can look for some solutions for you. All right, the last thing I want to talk about is activities to go, because this is a huge bank of ready-made print resources that are going to be available to our BoardMaker 7 subscribers. So I'm going to go to my BoardMaker here and I'm going to click on my curriculum. Now we have a whole session on this, so I'm just gonna kind of quickly introduce it here. I'm gonna add from the ready-made curriculum, this activities to go, where I'm going to find 10 different themes, and each of these themes has four different units. And each of these units has three levels of differentiation. So there's a whole lot of print materials ready for me to go in, take a look at. I'm going to add to my curriculum. So I'm taking a copy of this. And then I can go in and edit any of these to personalize to suit my needs for my learners. So they'll now show up in my curriculum. So I think I was just in space. It's just gonna take a moment to download. So I'll go into planets at the moment so you can see what that looks like. And then there's tons of resources from books to um, vocabulary um, activities, speech and language activities, fun stuff like recipes and um, arts activities, lots of games, lots of stuff that's gonna help our learners broaden their world knowledge whilst using lots of high utility vocabulary words. So lots of really fantastic materials that I can go in and take a look at. So let's look at this vocabulary activity and I can edit them with everything that I just showed you. All of these are ready to go. If there's different symbols I prefer, like right here is the US, we will have a, um, this localized in UK English from the release date. I just opened up a US version, but I can go in and put in a different map to make it more appropriate. Um, though when we do release this, it will be localized for UK English and UK content. So great stuff, lots of ready-made resources there for you to use. So there's 40 weeks of, of units differentiated to three different levels, all print-based materials at this point. If you wanna learn more, come to our session that's called Using and Editing Activities to Go. We have some um, coming up in the near future. All right, so that is our work through of um, the editor. I'm gonna go now to my PowerPoint and wrap up. So if you've got any questions, feel free to chat them in. So I'm just gonna change my share back to um, my PowerPoint. On. Let me open that. There we go. I had a question from Sean Atina. Uh, when is the launch date? Tw you, we need to be ready for this by the 20th of October. And any of you who are currently using BoardMaker Online, if you would have the time to stick around for a few minutes, I'm going to give you some really important information about the transition over to uh, BoardMaker um, 7 for you. So if you can just hang out. If not, there is a um, there is a video in the playlist. You're gonna get a, um, a link to this playlist where this 
recording plus lots of others are on our YouTube channel. There is a video called Three Things Every Board Maker Online User Needs to Know. It's a two and a half minute video. Watch it and we'll explain everything or stick around and I'm gonna talk to you about it and we can, um, we can answer any questions. All right, so I'm just going to, oh, hold on, close this and just wrap up. So I'm gonna start from this one. Okay, so we had a really good look through today of the editor. The editor is an installed app that's going to help you create print resources and edit print resources that um, you can find that we've made, like activities to go, as well as things on the community. Um, you've got a huge bank of templates and activities to go is something we're gonna give a little sample to for our BoardMaker 7 standard users, but BoardMaker 7 subscribers are gonna get that full 40 weeks. Now the editor can also help you create interactive resources, but today's session was all about print. We had a little glimpse of my board maker. So that's a website element of this, where we saw that cloud storage, where all of my stuff is going to sync up so I can move around, and as well as the community, where I found that aided language display that I copied and brought into my editor. Now everyone, standard and subscribers, have access to this cloud storage and the community. As a subscriber, you get it automatically. As a standard user, you just have to sign up for a free community account. Subscribers are also gonna get curriculum like Core First Learning and Reading Avenue. We have other sessions on that, as well as managing accounts, those logins that, that you were just asking about um, for both your instructors and your, um, your learners. You can also collect data. How much is your BoardMaker 7 being used by both learners and the staff? Now, we haven't looked at the Student Center at all today, but this is an element that's going to allow you to assign interactive resources for your learners to be able to use. It is an installed app, again, that you can put on unlimited computers, and there'll be a bank of free activities that everyone can use. BoardMaker 7 subscribers are also gonna get that added benefit of being able to assign anything that they've made or found in the curriculum or um, in the community and create an instructor playlist as well as a student playlist. So we have a session where we'll go into that about interactive resources. Please sign up, we're running that next week. Lastly here, there you go, we're running that next week, creating interactive resources. We've got one on the 1st of October, so please come if you wanna learn more about that. If you wanna know more about transitioning from your BoardMaker Online to BoardMaker 7, please come to those sessions. We also have using and editing BoardMaker activities to go and a session about supporting those who use AAC. So any of these are uh, free to sign up to. We would love to see you at them in the future. If you wanna know more, please go to the Toby Dynavox website and uh, there's a button about BoardMaker 7. So click on that and we've got information as well as uh, links to sign up for more training. Um, and we'll send you information about um, getting in touch with your local account manager who can talk to you about if you need more accounts, if you would like a trial of anything from BoardMaker to an iSeries, um, if you would like a smaller training or you would like something to bring in some of your colleagues to learn more about, our team is there to support you. So we'll get you their information so you can, you can link up with them and they can get you whatever it is that you need to know. Now I'm gonna end this recording. If anyone would like to stick on to learn about Board, the transition from BoardMaker Online to BoardMaker 7. It'll just take a couple of minutes. Otherwise, do watch it in our playlist, three things every BoardMaker Online user needs to know. But if you need to go, thank you so much for your time and attention. I hope to see you in a, another training in the near future. Um, so I'll just stop for a moment.